Located almost 2,000 miles from mainland USA, Hawaii is a rugby outpost in the Pacific. This year, the sport celebrated its 50th anniversary in the 50th American state. Hana is uh, Hawaiian for family. As many rugby players know, there's a great rugby family nationally and even locally, especially so in Hawaii, which is a real melting pot of different nationalities. And as well as that, we get a lot of visiting military players who are here briefly and then have to uh, be deployed. And that's also another network that we generate through our Rugby Ohana. I think rugby's been around uh, longer than 1964. You know, as you see, Kapilani Park itself has a polo field. The influence of uh, the British Royals, you know, it's just that Dr. Jack Keenan in 1964 started the Holocaust and then started organized rugby. We have all the clubs played in an organized uh, format. The biggest jump for us was joining USA Rugby. Youth has been part of USA Rugby for 15 years already. But for the adults, we only joined five years ago. A number of star names were on parade. Stephen Larkham, who won 102 caps for the Wallabies, was making his second appearance for Hawaii Harlequins. Coming out of rugby uh, has been fairly smooth. I know a, a number of people struggle. Uh, particularly coming off the top end where you're earning a lot of money and then you sort of start at the bottom somewhere. And, and I guess I did, I started at the bottom as a coach, but uh, it was still in that team environment. Even though I'm not playing professionally anymore, I'm still very competitive and uh, I like to think as a coach I'm, I'm very competitive. Um, so, you know, I run around with the boys still. What we're finding, I guess, with rugby is we see a lot of players uh, in that age bracket up to about 22. If they haven't made it as a professional by then, uh, they start to drop off and they start to try and follow a career. That's the nature of professional sport, I guess. Some people are in it for the money. The, the era that I came through in, it was all about uh, playing rugby because you love, you love rugby, you love being in a team environment. And the tournament presents an opportunity for the older hands to instill those values in the next generation of players. There's a really healthy contingent of golden oldies or vintage rugby players. Uh, over 45s, I think around the world, there's, there's really good competitions, there's a, there's a good team in Canberra, a good couple of teams in Canberra. There, there's a lot of focus around school age development and introducing kids to the game, but there should be just as much focus on the older age group. They're the ones who have got children, they're the ones who have got grandchildren, that can be introduced to the sport. But yeah, that bracket between sort of 25 to 40, if they're chasing rugby because of the money, then they seem to drop out at that, at that age. Whereas if you can sort of uh, entice them to stay in rugby through that period, they can certainly appreciate what rugby's all about. Fun fellowship and fond memories in the company of like-minded people. The Golden Oldies tournaments still have a role to play in the modern game. For this phrase I've coined, the rugby romantic, the Hawaiian Harlequins have really offered something fantastic to me because they've shown me of what I understood, what I grew up with. A tree is their clubhouse at Kapiolani Park. And they got old dudes like me that played 30 years ago on the sideline with a beer and a cooler watching the game. And so that's why I still cherish um, these sorts of rugby experiences, even though the, the game has been professional for nearly two decades now, uh, and everyone sort of, every man and his dog said that the the old fellowship and spirit of rugby might die with, uh, with professional rugby, but I didn't believe it would because the world is full of places like this where there is no money in rugby and people are only doing it for the same reason that we were doing it 20 or 30 years ago, um, because they wanted to play and they wanted to be part of a team and a challenge. That's what these guys uh, appreciate, that amateur era of, of just bonding as a group. You know, they were obviously part of it when they were growing up and uh, it was a big part of their life, uh, as it was for me and, and as it is for most rugby people. I mean, it's a, to be in a team environment is a very special uh, thing to have in your life and um, these guys know what it's all about and uh, they, they want to hold on to it as long as possible.